Hilton Towers, the UK's most popular theme park. Attracting millions of visitors each year on some of Britain's most thrilling roller coasters. Rides designed to bring us face to face with our deepest fears. It feels like it's an inherent need that I need to be scared now and again. Where we can put ourselves in peril, safe in the knowledge that we'll come to no harm. One year I came 52 times, like almost every weekend. <laughs> but in 2015, something went very wrong. In the last hour, two carriages on a ride at Alton Towers have collided. An air ambulance has just arrived. What had happened was completely the opposite of what we're here for. After the accident, visitor numbers dropped. But now, three years on, the park has decided it's time to attract the public back. And they want to do that with a new and even scarier ride. For inspiration, they have turned to the themes that also inspired the 70s cult horror movie, The Wicker Man. But will a ride based on wood, fire and ancient rituals be enough to bring back the thrill seekers? Tucked away in the Staffordshire woodland lies Alton Towers. Once the estate of the Earl of Shrewsbury, it's now Britain's biggest theme park. Known for its innovative roller coasters. Try to flight deck, transmitting flight plan. Galactica, which takes you on a virtual reality trip into space. We're on our way to the launch pad. Nemesis, Europe's first inverted roller coaster. And Oblivion, which drops you 60 meters into a hole in the ground. It is a little scary, but it was still really cool. The roller coasters are nestled in the park's 18th century gardens. The man who holds it all together is Ian Crabb. He's been the general manager for seven years. But like just about everyone who works at Alton Towers, his relationship with the park goes further back. I've been coming here since my first visit with my father in the late 50s. I was about nine. At the top of this tower was a telescope, if I remember rightly. That was the view I remember looking at. It's the first time I fell in love with Alton Towers. Ian was there at the launch of the Smiler ride in 2013. It broke all the records with its 14 loops. But just two years after it opened, one of its carriages full of people collided with an empty test train. Oh my God! Screams of horror in the moments after a carriage carrying 16 people collided with another empty carriage on the track. The force of the impact was the equivalent to a family car crashing at 90 miles an hour. The crash left two teenagers needing leg amputations. A total of 16 people were hurt, with five of them suffering life-changing injuries. The impossible had happened, and what had happened was completely the opposite of what we're here for. You know, and one can't exaggerate that. It's been, it's been absolutely uh, terrible for everybody. And, you know, uh, one has to remember the, the, the victims. For me personally, traumatic in the sense that, in my senior role, I was responsible for injuring people. Following a criminal court case, the park was found guilty of catastrophic failure of health and safety and fined five million pounds. As a result, the park has had to bring in new safety measures and compensation claims for the victims are still being assessed. The accident had serious repercussions for the park, with an estimated quarter of their visitors staying away. On a business level, we were heavily impacted. And we could only reassure people by people coming. 
we can only reassure them by them getting on the rides and, and recognising that we are safe. Alton Towers is hoping to get the visitors back by launching a new £16 million roller coaster designed by Bradley Wynn. I need to imagine that I am Willy Wonka and every attraction that we design for Alton Towers Resort um, is Willy Wonka on his lightest day, on his darkest day, on his craziest day. Bradley's brainwave is to go retro with the first wooden roller coaster to be built in Britain for over 20 years. There's always a light bulb moment when you, um, you kind of hit the, the gold nugget of the, the concept. Fire turned out to be that golden nugget. Bradley has designed a towering effigy, almost 18 metres high, that bursts into flames as the trains hurtle through it. Wood and fire, we knew that that was really exciting. And through the various rounds of research, we arrived at Wicker Man as the most compelling story theme to go with. The Wicker Man was made in 1973, and it has become a British film classic. Based on an ancient ritual, the locals in the film burn the Wicker Man as an offering to their god. Bradley has created a similar storyline for the ride, with fantasy characters called Bjornen. You are being lured in by the Bjornen. They're the people who built the Wicker Man, they're the people who've worshipped him, and they're behind everything that's going on. They believe that by burning a deity, a sculpture of the Wicker Man, they can bring his spirit to life. In order to do that, they need participants in a ritual and they need to offer you to him. So I sat in a darkened room and I started to write down um, a guest narrative. If I was a guest walking through this, this is what I'd see, this is what I'd hear, this is what I'd smell. The air is electric with spiritual energy. As you approach the woods, you can sense your straying into unknown territory. You can sense unseen eyes watching you and the hairs on the back of your neck start to tingle. As you approach the woods, it's impossible to miss the huge wicker deity towering over the surrounding trees. It draws you in with its epic scale. This is the biggest project Bradley has ever taken on. I've come from a ride enthusiast background and how I felt coming off of theme park rides, sharing it with your family, creating lifelong memories, I think there's something really special in that. Wooden coasters fell out of favour in the 1970s when theme parks started to up their thrills using complex steel structures. Today, there are only eight wooden coasters left in the UK. The man responsible for building this new ride is senior project manager Neil Walker. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a family thrill ride. It's it's going to be a really a really good immersive experience. To build the track, Neil has brought in the world's leading specialist firm from the USA under the leadership of Adam House. They've been at the forefront of a renaissance in the wooden coaster. I always tell people wood coasters alive. I mean, truly wood breathes, you know, it, it swells up when it's got, it's got water, when it's really dry summer, it'll shrink back down. Built by hand with seven and a half thousand tons of wood, the track has an extra design element for the thrill seekers, a triple down drop, which increases momentum and speed. This is kind of a non-traditional first drop, okay? And so what we've kind of done is, by the time you get down to the bottom, you'll be doing around 46 miles per hour. You can imagine this thing is just going to be flying through be here. Flying. It might be good old-fashioned wood, but Adam's team used 21st century engineering, twisting the track by 50 degrees to throw the riders around. Here you can see just next to me how much banking is actually going on at any particular section on the ride. Finally, there's a zero-G bunny hop, which creates a sense of weightlessness as the train travels through the heart of the Wicker Man structure. What we want to be is really close to the structure here uh, to get that sort of head choppy moment. You've done your job in two ways. One, if it's safe and nobody can touch it, and two, if you're on your ride and everybody's like this, and then goes like this. Yeah. <laughs> we want to have guests come off the ride screaming and yelling and, and looking terrified. And hopefully, you'll want to get back in line and go back around the ride. 
That's what we want. Overcome your fear, ride it again. The last wooden coaster built in the UK was the Megaphobia at the Oakwood theme park in Wales. It has a legendary status among enthusiasts. One fan who's ridden it more than most is Mark Lewis. This a part of my life, what I've done over the years. I got a megaphobia tattoo on my arm. It tells you then a little bit about when I actually rode, like 1996, I rode it for 12 hours and then the 178 rides. Believe it or not, 178 rides is actually the record of the most rides in one day. 2010, I'd done the seven hours and the 79 rides, and then it's a big one saying that I'd done 40 hours over five days. Mark is a member of the Roller Coaster Club of Great Britain. His club has been actively campaigning for a new wooden coaster since 1996. Um, this is quite interesting. I had this sent to me. Inside, it's got some real nice pictures of different wooden coasters. Everybody has different hobbies in, like, some people like football, I can't stand it. i got to be honest, i got a passion for wood. I just absolutely love wooden coasters. A real roller coaster is made of wood. It's just the shake, rattle and rolls. A wooden coaster is alive. You ride them in the morning, and it doesn't mean to say it's going to be the same ride in the afternoon. This is my nephew. He's absolutely petrified of roller coasters. That actual ride cost me a cheesecake because he told me if I give him a cheesecake, he'd come on with me. Back then in 1996, my son was born and uh, unfortunately for the first couple of months of his life, he was not very well. That was a megaphobia open and it helped me out a lot because sometimes being stuck in the hospital all the time, I was going down to the park then just to get a bit of time for myself not like shying away from my responsibilities of being a dad, but it was just nice sometimes to like, oh, let's go down to walk with for a couple of hours just to chill out, like, you know? Your son's okay now, isn't he? Yeah, you're a pain in the ass now. <laughs> I can't say that, really. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he's, um, he's 22 now. How excited are you about Wickerman? I'm over the moon, to be honest with you, because it's, you know, it's, it's a wooden coaster. It's, you know, an adrenaline thing, this is an important coaster as well to be built in the UK because if it could either it could either make or break a park really. Alton Towers has been building the basic structure of the Wicker Man for ten months, hiding it behind hoardings with tiny viewing slots to give park visitors glimpses of the new ride. So far, the effigy at the centre of the ride has been hidden under tarpaulins. I don't think we've ever built one theming feature on a roller coaster that we've spent this much money on. So it's, it's a big deal and we have to get it right. Now the tarps are coming off and Bradley can see his creation for the first time. Oh, there we are. So he's double-headed. On this side, it's got a ram's head that's looking down. On the other side, it's got a human kind of dainty face looking up towards the sky. That has lots of layers of story to why it's doing that, because the human face represents you being lured in with this promise of enlightenment. And then the ram looking down is the darker side of the story once you've been lured in and then things turn a little bit more sinister. There are now just four months before the park reopens and this new multi-million pound wooden coaster is unveiled to the public. My hope is that Wickham Man will deliver a new set of experiences. But for me, it's deeper, it's really the, you know, I am totally in love with this business. So we have to get Wickham Man absolutely right. Today, the top brass of Alton Towers are here to see the new ride which will open in two months' time. It's a £16 million investment, which they're banking on to bring the crowds flooding back in. Project manager Neil has to get its central feature, the burning effigy, up and running. How are you feeling? Uh, slightly nervous. 
Someone else under pressure is the ride's creator, Bradley. It's the first time I've actually seen it all fired up since it's been installed. This is a bit of a pivotal moment. Um, we've been waiting for a year and a half to see the kind of effect that we designed um, actually fired up and working, literally fired up. So hopefully it goes well. All the work we've done has led up to this point. If it doesn't look great, um, we've got three months, under three months until we open. If it doesn't look great, I'm not really sure what our options are. Just everybody keep within the boundaries. Uh, obviously, it's still a working site. So we're going to see the flame effect, hopefully. You can see now they're starting to fire the, the smoke up. Much of the wicker man's impact is all about illusion. The flames bursting from the effigy's shoulders are real, but the effigy itself, although it looks like wood, is in fact steel and concrete. And Bradley's fitted a high-tech extra, video screens, to give yet more fiery illusions. That's the first demo. I mean, that, it's going to blow our guests away. I'm really pleased with that. It simulates that the structure's like a big bonfire that's on fire and the flames are pouring up out of the torso, which is what we wanted to do. I think it's really cool. The whole thing has been designed so that the ride is as far away, although you get the perception that you're very close to it, the reality is as you're far away from the flame. So that at no time will any guest be in close contact with the flame. And where there's fire, there's smoke but not real smoke. It's another clever trick. The smoke effect on the ride itself is not even smoke, it's actually water vapor that you'll see. So it is just about an illusion. That 16 million pound investment weighs heavily on Ian, the park's general manager. It's quite a scary number, isn't it? It's a lot of money in anybody's world. You have to get off a coaster thinking, wow, you know, um, that really made the difference to my heartbeat, you know, my emotions and the way I feel. And if it doesn't succeed in that space, we've failed. A really good measure of the success of Wickham Man as an investment will be this business coming back to what it's been used to in the past, you know, more guests. And that will be a key uh, indicator for me that the investment has absolutely worked. The Wicker Man is a 21st century reinvention of the popular wooden roller coasters of the 1920s. Blackpool Pleasure Beach takes pride in having four vintage coasters. Local tram conductor and coaster enthusiast Peter Baker is building his own ride on his mum's kitchen table. It'll be awesome when it's, when it's done. <laughs> Tell me, what's the thing you like to do most? Probably go to Arm Towers. Bears and passes. I used towers as a way of escaping school. Yeah. It was just a case of everybody picked on one person. I was the person to be picked on. There we go. It was a horrendous time, and going to Arm Towers was my way of coping. Towers was the home from home. Is that illusion shuttered or no. something like smaller? No. It, I went that's straight back and straight on it. Yeah. It's point, not but... It's not the ride's fault. And he's excited about Wickham. It's a new ride, it's gonna be good. It's finally Towers time to have a woody. The backroom staff of Alton Towers are gearing up for the press launch of Wicker Man. The £4 million marketing campaign is the responsibility of PR manager Lizzie Roberts. I've only been in the role for a few weeks, so it's the first time that I've ever done anything like this. We're quite a new team here. I'm just ringing to give you a heads up. <laughs> it's her team's job to sell the controversial wood and fire proposition of the ride to the public. But first, they have to sell it to the press. You were kind of negotiated a double page spread for this. She's put a press package together 
and her team are drumming up coverage. Well, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of photos and stuff. Yeah, it's coming through um, Sunday at midnight. Just wanted to give you a heads up though. It's probably we're all super excited, but you know, not quite sure the level of uh, interest and inquiries that we're going to get. Working closely alongside Lizzie Morning. is senior brand manager Max Mayer. I wrote my university dissertation on Alton Towers. I mean, it was always what I wanted to do. For me, it is about making memories. This is one of my fondest memories as a kid. Peter Rabbit on ice, um, which is what I grew up with. And I remember coming to the ice show, seeing Mrs Tiggy Winkle dancing around on the ice. Alton Towers, to me, is happiness. The press and marketing team have been keeping the fire and wood theme a secret, but now's the time to go public. Today is important because it's the first time we'll get reaction from the press or the public. I'm interested to see what they've written and what, uh, what each of the media's take on it. Some of them might have picked up on the smiler. Does that matter? Um, now it's expected that the uh, the smiler will be covered uh, in some of the media. Hello. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Oh, well, that looks good. Um, the latest tally from the PR agency is that we've had about 110 pieces of coverage. There was a really nice piece there in the in the Daily Star. Um, we're also in the Express and Telegraph. But not all the press is positive. They're starting to pick up on some individual comments on social media. And, and I think where people have put things up about, oh, you know, wood and fire, have put some of those comments together and made it look like people are worried. But actually, this is not a representative view. You know, it's not, it's not the overwhelming tone. There's a real balance. Uh, the good thing about social media is that there's always somebody there to say, it's a theme park, it's meant to be exciting, you know, Alton Towers know what they're doing. So that's quite nice to see those voices coming through as well. People kind of going out and, and batting for us on our, our behalf. Now the news is out, will the Wicker Man bring the visitors back or scare them off? The pressure is on to get the Wicker Man ready for the new season. The engineers have to fit the carriages to the track. Each one weighs over six tonnes and costs as much as a new Bentley. It's a precision task. Project manager Neil watches over this tricky manoeuvre. Really exciting, this point in the project. This is a huge milestone about getting the train on the, on the track for the first time. It should just slot in very, very easily. However, it's not. It comes down to a matter of millimetres. I mean, it could be anything. It could be the, the timber's a bit small one. Yeah, quarter inch deep size for you. Hey! It's on! <laughs> <laughs> of course it fits. It fits. You get now. The fact that I'm delivering the first major roller coaster since the Smiler has happened hasn't been lost on me. People were devastated by what happened. I'd only been here 12 months, but I was looking at people that have been over here 30 years that had built this park up, that had put every one of these rides in, and they were absolutely devastated by what had happened. And that somebody had, had come along to their park for a really good day out and, and gone home, you know, with, with terrible injuries. And has, you know, really affected everybody. You know, something's happened here, and we want to make sure that it's, it's put right. In the wake of the Smiler accident, safety is at the forefront of everyone's minds. And with the carriages in place, the rigorous testing begins. The guys up the top 
We're doing the final walk round to make sure that there's no foreign objects on the track. They're starting to grease the track. Adam, the wooden roller coaster specialist, loads the trains with test dummies. Basically, we'll come through with the hose and fill all these dummies with water. It's adding 80 to 90 kilo to each one. The train will be tested at least 500 times with different configurations of dummies <laughs> to ensure it runs correctly under all weights. Only then will the ride get its safety certificate. But first, it has to make it round the track. This is it, moment of truth. Nearly there. Are you clear? Are you clear? OK. It's gone. The whole team have come down for this landmark occasion. The train is hoisted to the top of a 20-metre incline by chains. When it's released, it will be propelled by its own weight, gathering enough momentum to complete the circuit. That's the theory, anyway. Is it just going to go? I'm not going to stop at the top of it. I don't know, I still have any right stop at the No, it's going, it's going. Man has passed its first trial run. Well done, guys. Well done. That was awesome. That was awesome. Did you do what I did and imagine the effect when it went through? No, I didn't actually. I was too busy. Yeah, I was thinking technically, will it continue? Where's it going to slow down? And you were watching the fireballs go off, were you? Yeah. That was a major milestone. We've got it over the hill. We know it goes round. Uh, it's done exactly what we wanted it to do. The Wicker Man may be designed to look scary, but it's billed as a family ride. One family keen to make the 400-mile round trip just to have a go on the new ride are the Fiddermores. See, it's blowing your hair all around. It's blowing my hair around as well. <laughs> you don't have any hair. <laughs> so you want to <laughs> we go to theme parks as often as we can. It allows you to really get away from everyday life, and everyone has such a buzz. We get to spend the whole day together, and it always brings us closer together. But the cracky thing about vampire is the fact there's nothing underneath you. Yeah, your legs are hanging. And you, it just feels like you're flying. I am a relatively normal person who just who's trying to keep myself in rather than trying to let myself slip out. <laughs> Toby has many health conditions. He has a heart condition. He he's, he's, has atypical autism. Um, he has a spinal deformity. He also has chronic fatigue syndrome. So when you add all those things together, it's quite challenging. And it's really good for him to be able to switch off, and for us as well, and go and do something fun. I don't think I've ever felt unhappy at the theme park because it's just so fun now. It feels like I've done something, like, like substantial, I've accomplished something. We don't know what's going to happen in the future and it's really important to have these sort of memories for the family and for Toby. You makes me feel like I'm oh, really like, happy and like everyone's less annoying. <laughs> <laughs> When someone first told me about the Wicker Man, they told me it was a huge new wooden roller coaster and they had fire on it. And it's children who can't wait to get on it. It's spectacular. It looks fantastic. Hello, guys. Do you want to come in? Bradley's fire and flame creation may have caught the imagination of the enthusiasts. But now he has the tricky task of persuading the Alton Tower staff to immerse themselves in the world he's created. We've never done this before on a ride. I'm a bit nervous, actually, because um, I don't know how these guys are going to take it. 
they've got a costume to wear, they've got a character to play, um, and they need to know their place in the world of the Wicker Man and that they are members of the Bjornan. But you guys are really special because you are the Bjornan. They're dark and sinister. And basically, they're trying to lure people in from the outside world. They worship one god, and he is the Wicker Man. Bradley takes the team outside to train them to become Bjornan. Think like the Bjornan. This is where you live. You're probably going to be a bit protective of it. You're inviting these people in from the outside world. Just to start off, we're just going to do a few little games just to kind of get into the zone, shall He's we brought say? along the in-house so, acting troupe, headed by Kieran, to help them achieve his vision. Shake your feet. Shake your bum. And let's jump up and down and run on the spot. And reach up and crouch down. And reach up. Hamstring curls. No, I'm joking. So, <laughs> let's say Wicker Man. Yeah, same intensity, Wicker Man, but nice and loud. Wicker Man, Wicker Man, Wicker Man. Start walking around, follow the person and stare at them. <laughs> it's got to be friendly, but there's a lot of suspicion. Use old English words like thy or thine. Thine should sit down, pull down the black bar. Exactly. I can't do that, Molly. Really nice. I can't. Of course you can. Yeah, no, you can work on. You can work on it, Molly. Rob, if you find a different word that you say quite a lot, change it slightly and have fun with it. Cool. Well done, folks. That was good work. Well done. An ancient ideology exists. A beacon of hope. Can save us all. Yeah, yeah. And they're drone shot. To appeal to the thrill seekers, Max has been working on a video of the Bjornan that he hopes will go viral. Is he wearing trainers? He's wearing trainers when he falls to his knees. They've not done the final grade, you know, cut of it yet, so. Today, he and Bradley are looking at progress on the video. Okay, let's have a look then. I suppose my overall comment would be, yeah. who are we saying have produced this video? Is it the Bjornan? They've actually produced this video. Oh, yeah. From the Bjornan's point of view, yeah. So I guess my only watch out would be, if they are this um, community of people who are adverse to modern technology, yeah. then why would they why have would produced they produce a video viral file? Videos, exactly. and, well, not just a viral video, but how would they have produced a video yeah. without the use of computers? Yeah. So. Um, there's that concept of images that are projected onto film supernaturally, mm. straight from the mind, and it's all very dreamlike and nightmarish. I'm wondering if we could just add some more kind of post-production effects onto it to make it feel a little bit more dreaming. like that. It's finding the right balance about if this is yeah. from their point of view. It's finding how the right way of packaging that video. So I like it feels the like dreamlike coming. sense is exactly where they were going with it. Okay, so good. I agree. Our ancient saviour will summon a chosen few from miles around. With the finishing touches completed. It is released and soon picked up on. One particular coaster fan in Birmingham has high expectations of the new ride. I want to feel immersed in this area and that there's something else going on that I'm not quite aware of. I want to feel creeped out. Inspired by her love for roller coasters, Georgia Clark is training to be an engineer so she can build them herself. I initially found the details about the Wicker Man on this website called Tower Street. There are lots of enthusiasts there, lots of speculation. You can see the straight bits in the track will hopefully mean airtime. So when you get that feeling of bouncing out your seat, it's a good fun feeling. It's my favourite feeling on a roller coaster. Alton Towers is hugely important for me. It all started about 10 years ago when I lost a very close family member. My parents separated and everything just went crazy. I fell into depression, I stopped eating, I lost my appetite. I would not leave my house. I struggled to go to school and the only consistent place in my life was Alton Towers. I felt like I found a place in my life, somewhere I could be happy, somewhere I could be me. Why theme parks? I guess the thrill, the excitement, pure joy, and there's always that little bit of, am I scared? I like being scared. It makes you feel more human.
Right. Cheers, Tom. How far off are you for being ready to let this go? With visitor numbers still down, Alton Towers needs to reach out beyond the enthusiast community. They're making a prime time TV ad. Good morning. Overseeing the shoot is senior brand manager Laura Gerard. One of my jobs today is that uh, is basically sorting out a load of boys and making sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. But uh, I've got three of them at home, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Very good. I always wanted to work here, and I've been here eight years now. You know, it was my baby before I had babies. <laughs> you know, it's kind of been so special to me. <laughs> Are you looking forward to going on the ride? <laughs> Starring in the ad are a combination of actors and enthusiastic staff. I was one of the core members of the team that worked on the Smiler brand made it look really exciting and made, you know, people want to come and visit. I found it really difficult to accept that something like that could have such a detrimental effect on people's lives. And that's something I found very hard to move on from and I still think about it and I still find it difficult. And I hope with Wickham, it's going to be an opportunity for us to start to rebuild that trust with guests. It's great. It's a really nice frame. But as they're setting up for the final few shots, there's a problem. It's all going wrong, bro. I don't really want to talk about it, if I'm really honest. We are fucked because their ride is fucked. And the ride is not working. Despite some teething troubles, the new ride is up and running, and Laura gets her commercial completed. There was a few moments <laughs> in between the edits where we weren't quite sure if we had the right shot selection and the right moments of how we're really getting across how exciting the ride is, but I think I'm really pleased with it. The advert will be the cornerstone of the campaign to bring more visitors back when the park reopens for the season. I'm really pleased with how this opening uh, sequence has worked. It's all come together really, really well. I'll talk you through the schedule in a bit. With so. nine days until the Wicker Man ride opens, Lizzie has invited journalists from the national press to review the ride. It's my first big launch. Um, it's really exciting and, I, you know, I think uh, the ride looks fantastic. She's putting Bradley and Neil under the spotlight. We wanted to invite you to come up to meet some of the team behind it. So we're very lucky to have Bradley Wynn, and he is the creative mind behind The Wicker Man. Um, Neil Walker, he's overseen the whole process of uh, bringing The Wicker Man to life. It begins well. So what's the thinking behind it? All the towers of wanted to, to put a wooden roller coaster to him for 20 odd years. But soon, Bradley faces some tough questioning. Let's talk about Smiler. That happened, what, three years ago? Are people going to say, hang on a minute, you've built a roller coaster with wood and fire? Isn't that asking for trouble? Because we've had a lot of comments saying, wood and fire, what could possibly go wrong? Um, and just to kind of address that head on, that's kind of, wood, wood and fire is a paradox, and that's the reason we've chosen to do wood and fire. Of course, we've done it in a completely safe way. Tomorrow, Alton Towers opens to the public. But tonight is preview night, and marketing manager Sean Alcock needs a successful PR event to kick off their launch. Among the 270 VIPs are YouTube vloggers, soap stars and celebrities. Neil, the elements around you. Wicker Man waits. As guests experience the world of the Bjornan for the first time, the press previews start to come in. 
Alton Towers is preparing to open its first new roller coaster in five years. The ride's designed to be thrilling, but safety has never been in sharper focus. Alton Towers admits that rebuilding the public's confidence will be crucial as the new season gets underway. really good it was really terrifying that was scary she was screaming yeah a lot she hated it she was like clutching onto me <laughs> for dear life oh terrifying but i braved it in the end it's bloody sick it was it was scary it's been fun it's been loud it has been amazing and it's been a huge relief so much so i could actually cry but i'm not gonna <laughs> In Gloucester, one devotee can't wait for the opening day. This is my shrine to the theme park world. Richard Jones hopes to be the first in the queue to ride Wicker Man and add the ticket to his growing collection of memorabilia. My prized possession is my Guinness World Record certificates. We set the world record for the most naked people on a roller coaster. This was at Alton Towers. And then another park down at South End turned around and said to us, oh, would you like to do another world record? I am a very big uh, coaster enthusiast. I've traveled around the world. I've been to China, Dubai, Germany, America, traveling around just to go on the tallest, fastest, longest coasters in the world. The opening days for me is, is always trying to be the first on the ride for me and just getting that say, right, I was the first member of the public on that ride. And with Alton Towers, I've had Air when that opened, Rita when it opened, 13 was the other one, uh, Nemesis Subterra. So there's a fair amount of rides. I was the first member of public on those coasters. So for me to try and get the Wicker Man and the first wooden roller coaster that's been built in 21 years, about to be a dream come true. It's the official opening day of the park and the Wicker Man. Now the public get their chance to ride it. And Richard is right up there at the front. Eventually made it. He makes it to the queue for the first train. Absolutely stunning, so I'm so looking forward to it now, just get on. Some of the other Woody enthusiasts also make sure of their place. What's it like being back on the park, then? Good. Feels like home. <laughs> I'm actually in the queue now for the Wicker Man, so really looking forward to this, like I said. And there's some new, younger faces. Awesome. It looks fast and really cool. I'm a little bit scared, but a little bit, a lot more excited. The excitement isn't lost on Ian. I mean, look at it now. It's almost, it's almost rising up out of the smoke. So, <laughs> um, uh, of course, can you imagine that as a rider when you can't actually see very far in front of you? It's, adding to your excitement, just tremendous. I mean, look at this. Happy and excited and just full of energy. An OMG. It absolutely blew me away. It was awesome. It was really good, but I did have to close my eyes for a lot of it. This is way better than doing colouring at home. It's good news for Bradley. It's amazing. It's kind of gone from that 
idea to suddenly a real thing that I can be amongst the guests experiencing. I've yet to hear one bad comment from guests as they've got off the ride. So you couldn't get a better co a compliment than that. It's amazing. Um, yes, it's just a bit of a dream, really. Really happy. But for Ian, it's going to take a bit longer to judge the success of the Wicker Man. We've definitely got more visitors coming in. They want this kind of thrill. They want this entertainment in theatre. And standing here today is just absolutely fabulous. It's a new chapter. 